What's up guys, my name is Andre and welcome to another video. Today we're going to do an analysis of Intel's NetBurst and core architectures. Intel's NetBurst architecture was the first one in years to be designed from scratch, since all previous architectures were based off of the P6 architecture found in the Pentium Pro processors. It was designed with a long pipeline to allow for higher clock speeds. Think of pipelines as conveyor belts in a factory, where the information is going to be processed by the core. The big amount of pipelines on a Pentium 4 processor compared to a Pentium 3 is due to a gimmick called Hyper Pipeline Technology. A Pentium 3 CPU had 10 pipelines, while the later Prescott NetBurst based cores had 31 long pipelines. The greater the number of stages in the pipeline allowed the CPU to have higher clock speeds which was thought to offset any loss in performance. A smaller inst instructions per clock IPC is, is an indirect consequence of pipeline depth, a matter of design compromise. A small number of long pipelines has a smaller IPC than a greater number of short pipelines. In benchmark evaluations, the advantages of the NetBurst microarchitecture were unclear. With carefully optimized application code, the first Pentium 4s outperformed Intel fastest Pentium 3 clocked at 1.13 GHz at the time, as expected. But in legacy applications with many branching x87 floating point instructions, the Pentium 4 would merely match or run more slowly than its predecessor. Its main handicap was a shared une unidirectional bus. Furthermore, the NetBurst microarchitecture consumed more power and emitted more heat than any previous Intel or AMD architectures. The two classical metrics of CPU performance are IPC, instructions per cycle, and clock speed. While IPC is difficult to quantify due to dependence on the benchmark's application's instruction mix, clock speed is a simple measure measurement yielding a single absolute number. Unsophisticated buyers would simply consider the processor with a higher clock speed to be the best product, and the Pentium 4 had the fastest clock speed. Because AMD's processor had, had slower clock speeds, it countered on Intel's marketing advantage with the Megahertz Myths campaign. AMD product marketing used a PR rating system which assigned a merit value based on relative performance to a baseline machine. At the launch of the Pentium 4, Intel stated that NetBurst based processors were expected to scale to 10 GHz after several fabrication process generations. However, the clock speed of processors using the NetBurst marker architecture reached a maximum of 3.8 GHz. Intel had not anticipated a rapid upright scaling of, tra of transistor power leakage that began to occur as the die reached the 90 uh, nanometer lithography and smaller. This new power leakage phenomenon, along with the standard thermal output, created cooling and clock scaling problems as clock speeds increased. Re uh, reacting to these unexpected obstacles, Intel attempted several core redesigns, Prescott most notably, and explored new manufacturing technologies such as using multiple cores, increasing FSB speeds, increasing the cache size, and using a longer instru instruction pipeline along with higher clock speeds. These solutions failed, and from 2003 to 2005, Intel shifted development away from, from NetBurst to focus on the cooler running Pentium M microarchitecture. On February 1, 2004, Intel introduced a new core codenamed Prescott. The core used a 90 nanometer process for the first time, which one analyst described as a major reworking of Pentium 4's microarchitecture. Despite this overhaul, the performance gains were inconsistent. Some programs benefited from Prescott's double cache and SSE3 instructions, whereas others were harmed by its longer pipeline. The Prescott microarchitecture allowed slightly higher clock clock speeds, but not nearly as high as Intel had anticipated. The fastest mass-produced Prescott-based Pentium 4s were clocked at 3.8 GHz, while Northwood ultimately achieved clock speeds 70% higher than Willamette, Prescott scaled 12% beyond Northwood. Prescott's inability to achieve greater clock speeds was attributed to the very high power consumption and heat output of the processor. This led to the processor receiving the nickname Press Hot on forums. In fact, Prescott power and heat characteristics were only slightly higher than those of Northwood of the same speed and nearly equal to the Gallatin based, based Extreme Editions. But since those processors had already been operating near the limits of what was considered norm uh, thermally acceptable, this still posed a major issue. The final revision of the Pentium 4 was Setter Mill, released on January 5, 2006. This was a die shrink of the Prescott based 600 series core to 65 nanometers with no real feature additions but significantly reduced power consumption. Sutter Mill had a lower heat output than Prescott with a TDP of 86 watts. The core stepping of D0 in late 2006 reduced this to 65 watts. 
It has a 65 nanometer core and features the same 31 stage pipeline as Prescott. 800 MHz FSB, Intel 64 bit, hyperthreading, but no virtualization technology. As with Prescott 2M, Sutter Mill also has 2 MB of level 2 cache. It was released as Pentium 6X1 and 6X3 at frequencies from 3 GHz up to 3.6 GHz. The original successor to the Pentium 4 was codenamed Tejas, which was scheduled for an early mid-2005 release. However, it was cancelled a few months after the release of Prescott due to the extremely high TDP. A 2.8 GHz Tejas emitted 150 watts of heat, compared to around 80 watts for a Northwood of the same speed, and 100 watts for a comparably clocked Prescott. In development of the Netburst microarchitecture was a whole ceased, with the exception of the dual-core Pentium D and Pentium Extreme Edition and the Saturn Mill-based Pentium 4 HD. Intel Core The Intel Core microarchitecture is a multi-core processor microarchitecture unveiled by Intel in the first quarter of 2006. It is based on the Iona processor design and, can, and can be considered an iteration of the P6 microarchitecture introduced in 1995 with the Pentium Pro. The high power consumption and heat intensity, the resulting inability to effectively increase clock speed and other shortcomings such as the inefficient pipeline were the primary reasons for which Intel abandoned the Netburst microarchitecture and switched to a completely different architectural design, delivering high efficiency through a small pipeline rather than high clock speeds. The core microarchitecture never reached the clock speeds of the Netburst microarchitecture, even after moving to 45 nanometers. However, after many successor microarchitectures which improved upon the core microarchitecture, such as Nihalen, Sandy Bridge and others, Intel managed to surpass the clock speeds of Netburst using the Haswell microarchitecture, which reached 4 GHz using a, using a 22 nanometer lithography and ultimately derives from the P6 microarchitecture through the core microarchitecture and many other succeeding improvements. The core microarchitecture returned to lower clock rates and improved the usage of both available clock cycles and power when compared to the preceding Netburst microarchitecture of the Pentium 4 D branded CPUs. The core microarchitecture provides more efficient decoding stages, execution units, caches and buzzes, reducing the power consumption of core 2 branded CPUs while increasing their processing capacity. Intel CPUs have varied widely in power consumption according to clock rate, architecture, and, semicondu and semiconductor process, shown in the CPU power dissipation tables. Like the last Netburst CPUs, core-based processors feature multiple cores and a hardware virtualiz virtualization support marketed as Intel VTX, as well as Intel 64-bit and Triple SC3. However, core-based processors do not have the hyper-threading technology found in Pentium 4 processors. This is because the core microarchitecture is a descendant of the P6 microarchitecture used by Pentium Pro, Pentium 2, Pentium 3, and Pentium M. While the core microarchitecture is a major architectural revision, it is based in part of the Pentium M processor family designed by, by Intel Israel. The Penryn pipeline is 12 to 14 stages long, less than half of Prescott's, a signature feature of wide order execution cores. Penryn's successor, Nihalen, borrowed more heavily from the Pentium 4 and has 20 to 24 pipeline stages. Core's execution unit is 4 issues wide when compared to 3 issues of, of the P6 Pentium M and 2, issues, and two issue cores of the Netburst microarchitectures. The new architecture is a dual core design with linked L1 cache and shared L2 cache engineered for maximum performance per watt and improved scalability. One example of this is the Conroe L core. The Conroe L Celeron is a single core processor built on the core microarchitecture and clocked much lower than the Saturn Mill Celerons, but still outperforms them. It even outperforms many Pentium 4s. The FSB was increased from 533 MHz to 800 MHz in this generation, and the TDP was decreased from 65 watts to 35 watts. Traditionally, with Celerons, it does not have Intel VTX support or speed step. All the Conroe L models are single core processors for the value segment of the market, much like the AMD K8 based Sampron. So there you have it, an analysis of the Netburst architecture and its successor. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.